Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we are going to talk about valve adjustment on a overhead valve hydraulic type camshaft. Now this particular engine is just a small cubic inch Chevrolet. It is a small block, it's 327 cubic inches. And this thing is just plain Jane bone stock valve train with a mildly upgraded cam but it's got a flat tappet cam in it and it is hydraulic. So there's a real simple, simple procedure. If you have a really mild type hydraulic uh, flat tappet cam, this is the best procedure that I have found. So one thing that we want to do is we want to look at our harmonic balancer here. Now the nice thing about this type of balancer, and you can buy these, is that it has marks on the balancer every 90 degrees. And we've also marked our number one location at top dead center with this yellow mark. We have a timing tab here with a zero on it here. Our timing tab mark is marked in red and we've got the number one piston TDC on the balancer here. And we also have to have some way to rotate this. So we just have, we have these studs in here and we have a a pry bar and we just use this to rotate the engine. Now what you want to do to adjust the valves is you want to bring the engine up to top dead center compression. Now keep in mind it is possible to have your mark on your balancer number one here at top dead center but you're on top de dead center on the exhaust stroke. That is not where you want to be to adjust these. So this is our number one cylinder here. So what we're going to do is I've got the spark plugs out of it. I'm just going to put my thumb over the spark plug hole and I'm going to rotate this in normal rotation uh, clockwise. Now you heard that compression. If I rotate that around clockwise my mark is coming up towards my tab here and I feel compression come out of there. That means that I am on, when I get to zero here, I am on top dead center compression on the number one cylinder. That's where I want to be. Now let me rotate this once more because I want to show you what happens when you're not on compression. So if I go uh, one more revolution here, I'm just going to go all the way around and I'm going to bring that mark up again. And remember the cam and crank are two to one. So I'm going to put my thumb over that hole or my finger over that hole again and I get nothing. I get no compression blowing out of that hole. If you come up to TDC and you can't feel any compression out of that hole, that means you're on the exhaust stroke. So I'm actually in the wrong spot. This gets a little bit misleading because if I adjust my valves here, my adjustment's going to be wrong. So we'll go around, if, you, if, if that's the case, you want to go one more revolution and you want to bring this around and you'll hear it again. Now I'm coming up on compression. I'm going to put my finger over that hole and you can hear it. In fact, it actually pulled the motor over because the pressure stopped the crank from turning where my thumb is here. So we're almost to TDC here and you can hear that compression. So we'll bring this around and we'll put our mark on our wheel on our balancer right at the tab mark right there. Now my valves are ready to adjust. So we've got our balancer on top dead center compression. Now the adjustment for hydraulics is what we have to do is we have to find zero lash Lash is this up and down movement here, you guys. If you look at that, you can see these rockers are loose. So that up and down movement is lash. If we try to run the engine without getting rid of that lash, this valve train is going to be clattering like crazy and it's probably going to, you know, damp beat itself to death. So we have to go to zero lash and after we hit zero lash, so zero lash means I run the nut down here until I just pinch the push rod between the plunger and the top of the lifter, there's a hydraulic plunger in there. It has movement. I just pinched the push rod in between the rocker arm and that plunger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this down a little bit at a time and I'm, I can feel my lash here. Now some guys will tell you, well, what you should do is run this down till you can't spin the push rod. That is absolutely wrong. 
If anybody tells you that you should use the method of spinning the push rod to set these valves, they're, they're teaching you wrong. You just don't want to do that. The problem with that is, especially if an engine has been run and you're readjusting the valves, some of the lifters are going to be bled down so the plunger will have movement and some of them are going to be pumped up and they don't have any movement. So if you use the spin method, some of them will actually be tighter than others. So you don't want to do that. What we're doing is we're getting rid of that lash or that up and down movement. So I'm going to rotate this and I, as I rotate this and tighten it, I'm, you see I, I'm pushing the push rod up and down. Now my lash is diminishing. It's getting a lot less. I got just a tiny bit left now, but I still have some. I have to go until that lash is gone. So we're going to go a little bit more here. Okay, so we're really close right there. So right there, I have zero lash. There is no movement up and down in that push rod. You see, we haven't done this one yet. We got all kinds of movement over here on this one. But this one is at zero lash. Once you get to zero lash, now we have just gotten into the plunger in our hydraulic lifter down here. Now we have to preload that. Preloading is going to put me down into the travel of that plunger. That plunger has about 50 thousandths travel in it and it is, it's hydraulic so the valve train rides on that cushion of oil. What I need to do is I need to get down into the travel of that plunger. So in this case we're just going to go another half a turn and so what that has done is that has put me down into my plunger. I'm not bottomed out. I have a little bit of movement here. So I'm in the travel of that plunger right about in the middle of it and that valve is adjusted. I do the same thing with this one. I'm going to go down and I'm going to feel my lash up and down movement. I'm going to go until I get rid of that lash which is right there. No, nope, I still have some. Be careful because sometimes you can put the socket on here and if I feel this right now, if I'm pushing down on this socket too hard, it feels like I don't have lash. That can be misleading because if I take it off it's like, oh man, I have lash now. So when you're checking this, you might want to pull your socket off there just to make sure that you're not getting a false read by holding that socket down there. So, just got a little tiny bit more here. Just, just barely feel it. Okay, I have a little bit still, a little bit more. See, I'm going a little bit at a time. Now, I just got rid of that lash. I have no up and down play. And then I just turn that a half a turn. Those two rockers are adjusted on a hydraulic forever. You'll never have to readjust those again. Now, we have a firing order on this engine. So the firing order is 18436572. These cylinders, that's a V8, they're going to fire 90 degrees apart. So after this cylinder is at top dead center compression, boom, it fires. The next one in the firing order is going to fire 90 degrees later in the rotation. So what's nice about this balancer if we take a look at our harmonic dampener or balancer here this is an aftermarket balancer and it has marks every 90 degrees so if I keep going clockwise and I rotate this engine and I bring my next mark 90 degrees away up to the zero, that is going to put my next cylinder in the firing order at top dead center compression and then I can go ahead and adjust that. So the next one in the firing order is number eight. So I'm going to come over here to number eight and I'm just going to rotate the crankshaft clockwise till this next red mark comes up to my top dead center. And I'm going to put my finger over the number 8 hole so you can see what we're talking about. So here we go. We're going to go 90 degrees to the next cylinder. You hear that? I'm coming up on compression. I can feel the compression there. So my red mark here, I'm just going to take and line that up. And now my number 8 cylinder is on top dead center firing. I just go zero lash, half a turn on both of those, and they're done. After that, I rotate my engine again, and I go to the next cylinder in the firing order, which is number four. So you just go through the firing order, going 90 degrees at a time, and you can go to zero lash on each cylinder, and your valves are adjusted. Now that's one method that we have. If you have a 
a roller cam, like a big roller, they usually have a really small base circle. And this valve adjustment method a lot of times can cause you problems. You, if you do a big roller cam with this valve adjustment method that I just showed you, a lot of times you're going to have rockers that are not adjusted properly because you just, the base circle is just too small on those big cams and you really can't get on it using this method. So we have another method. We've already got number one adjusted here, but we'll use it as an example anyway. So what we're going to do here is you're going to do your intakes and your exhaust separately from each other. Now we're still going to use the firing order method. It still works pretty good. There's a couple, there's a couple extra steps here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my engine in normal rotation clockwise and I'm going to watch my exhaust. So this is my exhaust valve. Now, as soon as my exhaust valve starts to open, you'll be able to see it right here. I'm going to rotate this, and as soon as that rocker starts to move, that means the exhaust valve is opening. Watch right here. Okay, so that exhaust just started to open. My lifter just started to come up here, and I just started to depress that exhaust valve. Once the exhaust valve just starts to open, we're going to adjust the intake on that cylinder. Now, you can still go through the firing order and do this, what you do is you adjust the intake here and then I go another 90 degrees and I have to watch my my exhaust on my number eight because that's the next cylinder in the firing order so if I if I keep going what I'm gonna see down here now my exhaust over here just started to open so I'm gonna adjust the intake so you can go through and do all of your intakes in the firing order just watch the exhaust valve as it starts to open and do the adjacent intake and go 18436572. Now, for the adjustment of the exhaust valve, what we're going to do is a, is a little bit different. We're going we're gonna to get over here to where our intake opens, so we'll watch our number one here. Now, if you look at this, we just came out of overlap. My intake's going to open. If you watch this intake, now we're going to open that intake all the way. So here it goes, there it goes, it's going down. My lifter is rising here. We're going to go all the way down on our valve until where the valve is fully open. When that intake just starts to come back up, it just starts to close, we're going to stop right there. That's going to put us on our base circle for our exhaust. So if you watch our intake here, it's, it just started to come back up, so the lifter's going down. So as that intake just starts to close, we're going to stop, and we're going to do our exhaust valve zero lash and half a turn. Now same thing guys, you can go through the whole firing order and do that. Once I get this adjusted, I can keep going and I can watch my intake over here on number eight and it is still opening. I can see the lifter coming up here. It's gonna open all the way. Now it just started to close. So I'm just gonna go and do my exhaust adjustment on that one right there. 18436572 and your valve adjustment is done. Now. There's one other thing I want to touch on here real quick, just to give you a visual. What I want to do is I want to show you a solid lifter valve train. Alright, so now when we get into these really radical valve trains and we have, we have uh, solid lifters, what we want to do, you can use the same procedure that I just showed you as far as um, the intake, the exhaust valve just starts to open or the, the intake just starts to close. You can do it that way, but we actually have to set lash here. We have to have some lash because the lifters are solid. It's a solid piece of steel. So we're going to take a feeler gauge. We have a specified amount of lash here. Now these rockers on this engine have already been adjusted. When you get into like really hardcore engines that have crazy valve trains and big horsepower, you're going to have lash here. So you can see we've got, that's our specified lash. We've got lash. These are already adjusted and they're actually a little bit loose. They'll, they're going to clatter a little bit. You'll hear that clattering. That's because it's a solid valve train. They're a little bit noisy when they run. That's just the nature of the beast. So just remember a solid valve train has a specified lash in the valve train and it has to be set with a set of feeler gauges.